5 to 11 servings of bread, cereal, or rice. What? 3 to 5 of vegetables and 4 of fruits. Is pst, their antioxidants and fiber help you to digest. Organ transplants are a very important procedure when it comes to the health of many people. Organ transplants are used when people have organs that have failed, so failing organs, organs that have failed, and they need to be replaced, or otherwise the individual will suffer, either in terms of health-wise or even die as well. In many cases, they would die if they didn't get an organ transplant. The idea of the sort of organ transplants is to find a donor, right? So you find another person who is either, in some cases, they might have just died, maybe from a road accident or a different type of accident, or they might volunteer to donate their actual organ whilst they're still alive. So we have a donor and we have a recipient. So we have a recipient, recipient, and if I'm spelled that wrong, that's my bad. So we've got a donor and a recipient. The donor is the person who donates the actual organ and the recipient is the one who gets it. And the donor will either be dead or, or alive, depending on the actual organ that's also transplanted. Now we have, what we have is, for example, in many cases, kidneys are, are a big thing to get donated, or livers, or different parts, many different organs to get um, donated, and then by they give it to a different individual. Now you can actually have a problem, so there can be a, a problem when it comes to donation, organ transplants, not the donation part, but the organ transplanting part. So putting, for example, the kidney of the donor kidney, into a new person, into the recipient kidney, uh, recipient, so into the person who receives the actual kidney. So it could be a problem, there could be a reaction which happens. And you think about the possibility of why that might occur. Think about the whole idea of what we discussed in the last video, but we talked about antigens. So that's what this will be about. The reason why donor kidneys might be causing the immune response, and that could be to the antigens which might be on donor kidneys. So this, the top one that we cover in this video is this one here. Explain why organ transplant should trigger an immune response. In this case, we have to explain, so we have to know why it happens. So we've got here, okay, let's say this, let's say this is our, we often have, so everyone initially has two kidneys. So we've got two working kidneys, and we really only need one kidney. But let's say, let's assume one person has lost one function of the kidney. So this is its own kidney, so it only has one left. It's, this one is the own one. It's when it's, it's body's kidney. And this, these are the white blood cells. So these are the white blood cells that will try to make sure there's no invading pathogen or thing that shouldn't be in the body. And what it's going to do is obviously it's going to check all of the top things to make sure that they're not antigens, to so make sure that they're matching. In this case, they're all matching the actual antigen. Uh, the molecule of the white blood cell is matching the molecule of the kidney tissue because they're obviously identical. But what happens if, for example, we donate, someone donates an actual kidney, and now we have, now that person might have two kidneys again. Again, that usually doesn't happen. Usually people only receive a kidney if they've lost both the function of their, of their kidneys. But let's say we have one of our own and one of the donors. This is the donor one, which is now in our body. But what are the white blood cells gonna do? Well, the white blood cells are gonna check. So. Again, when it comes to the own one, it, when it checked, it looked at the ID card by checking the antigen, and it gave it the green light because everyone's fine. They matched its own and, and molecules on top of its on top of its surface. Whereas when it checked the donor ones, what would happen? Well, here this is this strange squiggly line, and here we've got this strange squiggly line. So they're not the same. So what's going to happen when they check? Well, they're going to check, and they're going to find out. Oops, it's not matching. So they give the red red alert. You know, this guy is not meant to be here. So even though we want the guy to be here, we want the kidney to be inside or actually in the, in the donor in the recipient's body. But our own white blood cells have considered it to be a threat. They can't again they can't look at it. They can't say, okay, well, this is no, it's fine. No, this is an antigen, but look, it's a kidney. It's kidney is it's good for us. It doesn't have the eyes to do that. It doesn't have the brain to do that. It will just look at the the antigens and thereby it will look at the antigen of the donor kidney and see it as a threat because it has a different type of molecule than its own molecule. Right, so that will cause a problem and what will happen is these white blood cells will then all attack the donor kidney and actually kill it. 
and we call this rejection. So a kidney has been rejected by the recipient. If the recipient's body has attacked the kidney and destroyed it, thereby rejected it. So the dot point itself says explain why organ transplant should trigger an immune response. We've just explained, right? We've just talked about why that occurs. Because our own body cells, especially white blood cells, who are meant to defend our body from invaders, has looked at the actual antigens on top of the kidney and seen it as a threat because it's not matching its own and thereby has decided to invade and destroy the tissue, which is in this case actually bad for us because we don't want the kidney to be destroyed. But what can we do to try to minimize the risk of this happening? Because, I mean, we do need to do organ transplants. What can we do to try to minimize the risk? Well, we could, for example, so I wrote here, what can we do to reduce the risk of rejection? First of all, we could get a closely matching donor organ. So let's say uh, this, the one that donated, actually had very similar molecules on top of it. I'm just going to do it for three, but imagine it would be for all of them. Let's say it was so similar that it won't actually see it as a, as a foreign invader, right? So when it checks it, it's like, okay, well, they're, they're exactly like mine, so it's no problem at all. So that's why we often, when it comes to organ transplants, we're actually going to look at what kind of uh, molecules are on top of the kidney. And that's why I try to get close relatives to donate, because close relatives would be a higher chance or a higher likelihood of having identical ones. Right? So we want to have a closely, as closely matching donor organ as possible that will reduce the risk of rejection. And also, what we do nowadays, which is something which has greatly improved the rate of non-rejection, is we suppress the immune risk system. So we basically inactivate these white blood cells for a while. And we usually do that for medication. So a person will take medication, their white blood cells will be inactive for a while. It doesn't have to be for too long, for a couple of days. And that will be long enough for our actual kidney, the new kidney, to become part of our body and not get rejected anymore. So these medications lower our immune response. Right? Our immune system is weakened it won't do its job anymore during that time, which is good because that means our kidneys won't be rejected, our new kidney, our new organ. But what kind of bad thing could that mean? I mean, if our immune response, which is meant to defend our body from pathogens, if that is reduced, what risk would that give us? What could that possibly cause? Well, it could cause more bacterial infections. But pathogens have a, have a heyday and they can just go in and do whatever they want. So these pathogens are not being hunted down as much as they were beforehand by our white blood cells. And that's obviously a problem, right? So that is one of the risks we take when it comes to taking these medications. Our white blood cells have been deactivated, which means that the pathogens, which are meant to be killed by the white blood cells, might be have an easier time to invade our body. So I'll read the dot point, I'll go over the dot point again, explain why organ transplants should trigger an immune response, right? So organ transplants have different types of molecules in our own white blood cells, so therefore the ant they are antigens. So the white blood cells, if it's not closely matching, will attack the kidney tissue, right? and the kidney tissue will eventually be destroyed, which means we have rejection. And that attacking we call the immune response. So this is why it triggers the immune response. And what can we do to try to reduce the risk? That's what you actually also need to know that as well. First, we can try to get closely matching donors. That will help a long, that will help a lot because it means the actual molecules will be very similar. And also we can suppress the immune system by giving them personal medications. And that will make sure that our white blood cells have less of a time hunting down the kidney because they're not actually being active, which is good. But the problem is, it means our, if our immune system is, is down, that means the pathogens are more likely to roam during that time, the couple of days, which means they have a higher risk of infection in general. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.